Question for you. What does a cookbook about Southern recipes, including really great stories, have to do with the Grand Budapest Hotel? <laughs> How are they alike? How are they the same? Besides the fact that this movie also includes a really cool recipe. Um, but how, how are they the same? I'll tell you. I got both of these at the library. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I've been reading and what I've been getting at my local library. So I guess we could call this video a library haul. So don't go anywhere. Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. This is My Handmade Lifestyle and I'm Patty. Welcome. I go by Patty Magnets everywhere online and this is my YouTube channel which I named My Handmade Lifestyle because I like to do a lot of different things but it's all things that we can do with our hands. What do I mean by that? Knitting obviously, uh, also some embroidery, some sewing, cooking, gardening, things like that. So if that sounds interesting to you, I hope that you will enjoy today's video. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you like the video. <laughs> I'm giving you a lot of things to do. <laughs> uh, like the video and uh, let your friends know because I am really uh, have a goal to grow my channel this year. Okay, so that's enough of that. <laughs> I always feel awkward doing that part of it, but you sort of have to. It's just the way it is. It's YouTube. So, okay, moving on. Today's video is actually the result of a uh, quick Facebook poll that I took of my uh, lovely Facebook followers. And I asked them if they would be interested in seeing a library haul. Uh, so on YouTube, Hall culture is huge. Everybody does it. I've done some. Um, but you know what? That gets really expensive. <laughs> and um, I'm a little bit different from some of my uh, younger counterparts here on the channel. I have a home, uh, a yard. And so sometimes um, my haul is stuff like um, soil and um, lawn fertilizer and bird seed <laughs> and I I don't know I don't think that's all that interesting so um, I don't I don't typically share those things uh, but uh, this year 2019 I have really gotten into visiting the library and making use of those resources and I've been going to the one that is in downtown Norfolk so it's the next city over it's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to film a little video of it uh, while I'm over there today. And I think do like just a short video about that library because it is amazing. And I think for people who visit the area, it's really something to be aware of because it's incredible. Okay, so let me uh, show you what I have in, um, what I've been, reading, looking at, using the last couple of weeks. I would also like to say that, uh, yes, this is a completely different background. I'm trying something different. Uh, this is my living room and like the background doesn't look fantastic, but I didn't have to set up any lights. I'm kind of in front of a window. I have a skylight right up here. So I feel like the lighting is really good. Um, and uh, because I had my um, hair washed and cleaned and makeup on my face, I really wanted to film this video because most of the time this does not happen. <laughs> so if I'm already a little bit um, cleaned up, let's say, I, I like to do a video. Um, okay, so um, something you may not know is that at libraries, not only do they have an incredible selection of books. They also have movies that you can rent. And um, I am a huge Wes Anderson fan. And so uh, I got the Grand Budapest Hotel, which I had not seen before. And I loved this movie. It is so funny. I loved how they talk to one another. I, I loved how the main character just calls everybody darling. I just want to do that, you know, like, oh, darling. I just thought that was cool. Um, 
this was a great movie. I loved it. Um, it has one of the starring features of this film, believe it or not, is a pastry. And there is, uh, in the extended footage, the recipe for how to make it. And it's a lot of work, but I think I want to try to do it. Uh, it's called Mendel's Pastry. Basically, <clears throat> it's um, shoe pastry with chocolate pastry cream. And they're like, they did them in like little uh, balls and shoe and they're of different sizes small medium large and they stack them and then they use a buttercream to stick the shoe pastries together and then a little drizzle i mean it's you know, who's not gonna like that so uh, i think i want to try that when i get to the stage of actually making shoe and creme pat uh, i'm not there yet uh, but anyway yeah grand puta best hotel fabulous movie um i also got Isle of Dogs, and I love this movie. I saw this one in the theater, and it's so cool. All those dogs, they're puppets. All of this movie was done with handmade puppets using stop motion filmmaking um, techniques. And all, all of these characters are handmade. And actually, in this movie, uh, it's a lot of models. Like, that is a model of the hotel. And they, they do a lot of stop motions in this also. So I guess, I don't know, Wes Anderson, there's so much that I like about him. But um, I guess the, the handmade approach that he takes to his filmmaking, I adore that. Um, this movie, it's a little bit sad. It's a little bit upsetting. Uh, but overall, it's really good. And you forget, I did anyway, you forget that you're watching um, puppets for the most part. They become so real. So uh, personally, I would like to own both of these because I think they're they're great. So I don't know. Wes Anderson is not everybody's cup of tea, but um, I adore him. I would like to learn more about making films. I don't consider myself a filmmaker by any stretch. Okay, we'll just get that out of the way. But um, I would like to learn to make better little videos for my channel. And he inspires me to try some new things with my uh, video making. We're not doing that in today's video. Today's video is just me talking to you about my books. So, okay. Uh, but first it was videos. So anyway, yeah, if you don't know, you can get a lot of really good videos at your library. And I'll also add that I'm going to put all of the um, all of the books that I talk about today. I will um, put them in the um, down below and uh, links over to where you can find them because they're they're actually really good books. So uh, this one is called How Not to Kill Your Houseplant, and um, I liked it because. What this author does is um, she shows you the picture of the plant and this split leaf philodendron, that is like all the rage right now. Everybody's hot for this plant. And so she shows you the plant and then she talks about how not to kill it. <laughs> okay, first of all. And then if you have these issues, she talks about... Um, what's going on and how you can solve that. And she also talks about um, related plants. So it's a lot of information that I think is presented in a really nice format. It's easy to follow, it's easy to understand. Um, and it addresses all the main things because what I find for people is that they typically, they have a plant they want but then they want to stick it wherever they want. They want to put it in whatever pot they want to put it in and they water it whenever. And I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, unless your plant is a fake plant, that is not going to work. I'm so sorry to break that to you. Plants have very specific um, care needs in terms of where you place them, how you pot them up, 
how much water you give them or don't, uh, all of those things matter. So this is really nice. And if you struggle with plants, this is a good book. And I liked this one enough that I think I'm going to try to get a copy of it to keep in my personal library um, because I get so many um, questions from people. I mean, she just does such a great job where she goes about all of the common insects how to treat them, uh, you know, insects are a thing. You're, you're gonna, if you have plants, you're going to at some point in the journey wind up having uh, bugs and you gotta know what to do. So, um, how not to kill your house plant. And the author is Veronica Peerless. So this is a definite yes, this is a good book. If you like plants, <laughs> which I do. And I know a lot of you, that watch this channel also do. <laughs> I'm pun I I'm super punchy. I'm trying to hurry up and get this done because I've got to get to the library and return some of these things and it's getting late in the day, but anyway. Um, okay, this book, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to get this one and I have not even cracked it yet. So this one's staying home with me. Audrey and Givenchy. Um, I just loved it. Um, I browsed it uh, oh, briefly the day I picked it up, but I do want to take the time to sit and read it. Uh, so, yes, if you don't know, it's Audrey Hepburn, um, who was an incredible film actress, and I have just enjoyed her in so many different things. She was also um, a, a wonderful human being. And she uh, spent a lot of her life working with the designer Givenchy, and that began in her film Sabrina. And uh, if you're familiar with the original Sabrina, it's a wonderful film, and he dressed her for that movie. And let's just say she looked great. <laughs> great. Um, this book, so. It's, um, it's just a lot of pictures of her with little short snippets of text. This is like a, this is what I would call a snackable book. Um, she, um, the author, who is the author of this book? Cindy De La Hose. Um, yeah, she just talks about the, um, the costuming and what she wore in different films and um, like how that uh, particular outfit worked with the character to better illustrate the character for the film. And this is in uh, Funny Face and I love Funny Face. If you don't know Funny Face, uh, you've got to watch it. And here she is. So uh, she made her claim to fame in the 50s that's when she really got started and uh, she was very unusual for her time because she was like super thin she wasn't a really glamorous and of course you know the big stars of that time were Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield and you you can't get much farther from Marilyn Monroe than Audrey Hepburn I love Marilyn too though so Anyway, if you are an Audrey fan, um, this is a beautiful book. It's um, just some stills. This is also Funny Face. That is a great movie. If you don't know that movie, you've got to see it. I have it on DVD. This is also Funny Face. Okay. Anyway, this book is a definite yes. I'm holding on to this one for another week. Audrey and Givenchy by uh, Cindy De La Hose. That's a yes. Also, let me just tell you, in the library, everybody thinks you just go to the library. Everybody thinks you go to the library to get like novels or um, like historical information and you know, things like that. And okay, yeah, it's full of that. You know what else it's full of? Cookbooks, <laughs> did you know? that you can get cookbooks galore 
in the library. It's amazing. Amazing. So I like that because you can try out some of the stuff. You can bring it home. You can see if you like it or not. And um, look up some of the, uh, the recipes before you make them. This book on Madeline's, I have made Madeline's and um, I made mine using the class on Blueprint with Colette Christian because they're tricky. And so I got really excited when I saw this book and I will tell you, this book is gorgeous. It's a hardback. It's got the little bookmark that comes with it. Everything is so pretty. Let me see here. I keep changing the exposure for you so you can see. So, I mean, the pages are beautiful. Let me find a picture. The pictures are gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to make that, right? It's the issue. So I fell in love with the book because of how it looks. I have not tried cooking out of it yet. Um, so I'm keeping this one another week. Uh... But when I looked up, you can still buy it on Amazon. All of these books you can get on Amazon um, as used. I always buy used books on Amazon. But um, a lot of people had problems getting the recipes to work. And so that's challenging with Madeline's because they're so picky anyway. Um, but I'm going to try out making a couple of the recipes before I, I send this back. So that might be what I do this weekend is um, bake a couple of uh, Madeline recipes and see how they are. And I will let you know. You know that I will. Uh, but I will say the book is beautiful. I want the book just because it's so pretty. And I like the pictures. And I am um, I want to work on my food photography uh, skills because they really need they need some work. Food photography is really hard. There's a lot to it. There's a lot going on to make a really good food food photo, and I want to get better at them. So um, the pictures in here are really good to to inspire. But um, uh, I can't tell you from personal experience yet how I like the recipes, but I'll let you know. Um, so Madeline's by Barbara Feldman Morris is a maybe. I've been doing a little uh, dabbling with sewing, which I have enjoyed, and uh, I'd like to do more, but until I can kind of get caught up on the outside of my house, um, the crafting and things inside, it's, I'm not getting a lot done. Um, but I picked up this book to have a look at. It's called A is for Apron, and it's by Natalie Mornew. And I just thought it was so cute. You know, who doesn't love aprons? And um, so it's got a lot of cute things going on. And she, I mean, it's like a picture book. So if you are somebody who just adores aprons, you'll love looking at this book because it's lots of pages like this. So she's not necessarily giving you <clears throat> the instructions on making that those, but uh, it's like uh, inspirational. Uh, but she has several you can make. So like this is one. And, and you know, aprons are such a good like beginner's sewing project. This is so cute. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? So she gives you, and here's the instructions on this page. So you get the picture here, there's your instructions. And so you're like, so your question is, that's fine, where's the pattern? Okay, the pattern is on page 138. And so it's on this page. So, as you can see, that's really small. That, I'll tell you what that would fit. That would fit an American Girl doll, is what that would fit. Um, so, 
what you do is, I'm guessing, I don't really know. You have to go to a copy shop because um, what it tells you to do is enlarge 400%. So I guess I take this to the copy shop, like, um, you know, the office store, and have them size it up 400%. And then that would give me my paper pattern pieces to cut out. So um, I frankly haven't tried that. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I enjoyed the book. I liked looking at it. It has some cute things in it. This is really cute. Um, but I, I didn't make anything out of it. I'm not going to because to, in all honesty, I have like three different Butterick style patterns in my crafting room already that I can cut out and sew from there. So that's what I'm going to actually do rather than try to fool around with sizing up things in here. But it's a cute book. And, um, you know, if you're just looking for something cute to look at, this is a nice book. So, um, but I'm going to return that one today. That's in the return pile. Uh, this is another sewing book. This one's called, uh, vintage purses, vintage purses to make, sew and embroider. It's by Sandrine Kjelt Michaud. I think I'm saying that right. Sandrine, Sandrine Kjelt Michaud. She's obviously French. And this is a cute book. Um, so, I don't know. I kind of need videos to really get the idea for how you put these things together. But here's what you get so you get like this really nice picture of the project and then here's your instructions and then for these here's your patterns and so these are like actual size you can go to the copy shop and um, photocopy the uh, patterns and um, try making them <sighs> These little change purses, you know, that's what I call them. You can't really get those anymore. They don't have them with the little, you know, the little um, snap at the purse. Let me find a picture like this. This part, you can't buy those anymore. When I was a girl, that's what everything was, was a little, we called them a change purse. Um, but what you can do now is you can go online and buy this, which is called a purse frame. So those are, uh, and they're pretty easy to find. And I guess there's a lot of people that uh, sell uh, these vintage reproduction um, things through Etsy, maybe at um, church sales, things like that. So uh, that's what you wind up having to do is to uh, purchase the uh, purse frames and then you sew your little um, pieces together and that's how you get your little change purse but I, I wasn't entirely clear it looks like you like you line it and you sew it by hand to the frame i wasn't totally clear on, on how to do this um, i believe i have a class in my blueprint that shows how to do it so that's probably what i'll use um, but this was a cute book to get ideas and i definitely would like to make some of the change purses but I'll probably use my blueprint class for that so I'm getting myself geared up to do knitting tutorials again and uh, yes you can get knitting pattern books and stitch tutorials at your library as well so keep that in mind you can try stuff out before you buy it um, this book is called the Knitting All Around Stitch Dictionary. 150 new stitch patterns to knit top, down, bottom up, back and forth, and in the round. And this is from Wendy Bernard. And so basically what she's doing is she's taking any stitch pattern and she's first showing you how to just knit like a flat swatch and then, you know, bottom up. Then she's saying, here's how you can do it from top down. 
Then she's saying, here's how you do it in the round. <laughs> what was the other thing? Back and forth, top down. Yeah, top, top down, bottom up, back and forth and in the round. So any knitting way that you can put something together, she's gonna show you how to make um, any of these stitch patterns all those different ways. And I think that's pretty cool. I liked this book. Um, it's on a spiral, which is cool. So it actually opens up. So she really, really knew what she was doing and marked a bunch of pages. Um, yeah, this was a great book. So uh, she gives you the picture of the swatch. She gives you the instructions and she also gives you the chart. And I just think this is a very, very thorough book. This is a great book. Uh, I may go ahead and order this one for myself on uh, Amazon because it's got everything in it. And I do want to start doing um, knitting tutorials and not just like a stitch, like here's how to, how, here's how to do a knit two together. Here's how to um, do a yarn over, that type of thing. I want to get into showing like these things like here's slip stitch rib and here's how you actually make it because it's hard for people to read these instructions and figure that out and it it stops a lot of people from um, moving forward in their knitting so um, I want to start doing uh, simple uh, patterns for you on the channel so that if you're like, I just can't read the patterns, well, I'm gonna help get you past that because believe me, girl, I understand, I know, it's hard to get your brain to take the knitting notation and translate that into making something. It's very difficult to get started with that, um, but I think I can help you with it. So. Um, I'm kind of looking for the right stitch dictionary to use that's got a lot of different things and I think this might be it. I liked this book. So um, I'm going to hold on to that for another week and um, maybe I'll get that on Amazon. That's a good one. Uh, if you're looking for something for yourself, I highly recommend that one. Okay, last but not least, um, <laughs> this one has been really fun. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading it, and um, it's called The Secret Lives of Baked Goods, and it's sweet stories and recipes for America's favorite desserts. This is from Jesse Olson Moore, creator of CakeSpy.com. I didn't even notice that until I read this to you. CakeSpy.com. I have to look that up. Um, I have really enjoyed this book. Uh, basically it goes through a whole bunch of different recipes that are all things that we as Southern cooks are very familiar with like red velvet cake and the book talks about how did that get started what is the story behind the red velvet cake who made the first one why is it named that what is the significance of it I mean it's really fun um, so and it's a lot of, it's a lot of nostalgia. So you can see she's got like old pictures here. Um, yeah, it's about like the animal crackers, lemon meringue pie, donuts. I mean, <laughs> it's not a diet book, that's for sure. There's no keto in here. <laughs> There's no paleo cupcakes in this book. I'm just gonna tell you, this is the real stuff. Um, and I, I've really enjoyed this book a lot. And it has uh, several recipes that I would be interested in making. Um, so the way this book works is you, um, you get your little story. And this is about birthday cake. And birthday cakes are like hot right now. I don't know what in the world is going on. Um, so it's all about the birthday cake. And then she gives you a recipe for yellow birthday cake. The only thing about this book that makes me less than happy is that it's all in cups and girl I can't stand 
trying to bake anything with a bunch of cups because it's gonna get messed up. It just is. It's too hard to be consistent. But I like the book enough. I'm gonna go on the King Arthur website. They've got a converter where you put in whatever it is and uh, it will tell you the proper measurement in grams because I'm telling you, grams is the only way to go when you're Grams is the only way to go when you're uh, baking. It just is. Uh, I know a lot of people are freaked out about using a kitchen scale. I'm going to do a video and show you how I use it. It's so easy. It's so easy. And your baking improves 100%. It's like if you can take the uncertainty out of the dry ingredients uh, or the ingredient measurements in general when you're baking, that is a big thing. Because baking, it's like the more you work at it, the harder it gets. It's really, it is quite a challenge. Um, but uh, the ingredient list is simple, which I like. I don't like to get super complicated, just like with my knitting. I don't, I don't want it complicated. So I think one of the first things I'm going to make are these um, whoopie pies. This hair really good. And let me tell you what else I'm going to do. Not only am I going to make them, I'm going to convert them to grams. I'm going to size the recipe down because this will make 12 sandwiches, a dozen sandwiches. I don't need a dozen whoopie pies in here. That's way too much. So if I size it by half, I'll only have six and that, that is better for me. So that, that's kind of my new thing that I'm doing. I'm going to size all the recipes down by at least half because, um, you know, except for pies. I mean, pies are kind of hard because you only have the one size, but you know, cakes, uh, instead of doing two eight or nine inch cakes, I'm gonna do them as six inch cakes because a six inch cake is reasonable, okay? That's a reasonable thing. So I'm gonna figure out how to do uh, six inch layer cakes, not with three layers, with two layers. <laughs> So, okay, so this book, yeah, I've been reading this at bedtime and um, I really enjoyed it. So here's about the red velvet cake. The stories have been interesting to me. It's, it's light. You know, I don't want to read anything distressing or heavy before I go to bed. That's not, not where I am. Uh, so... I just read simple things like this and I have nicer dreams, I believe, and I get good ideas, you know, in my sleep. So, um, the secret lives of baked goods. I'm going to try a couple of things out of here. And to be honest with you, this is one I would purchase. I really like this book. Um, I think it's a good book. She's got Catherine Hepburn's brownies back here. Um, she's got, um, Oh, the better than sex cake. I remember that one. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. That was big in the eighties. Oh, how funny. There it is. I haven't gotten this far in the book, so I didn't even know that was in here. Oh, that's hilarious. And I mean, it's, it's easy. It's stuff like, um, let me just read you the ingredients for the better than sex cake. And some of you might remember this one, uh, but it's cake mix, pineapple juice, brown sugar, vanilla pudding, instant pudding, whole milk, heavy cream, confectioner sugar, vanilla extract, flaked coconut, chopped pecans. Or I should say pecans. That would be more appropriate. <laughs> uh, and this makes a 9 by 13 cake. So it's huge. But um, there's no whipped cream. When we made them back in the day, they had whipped cream on them. Or Cool Whip. It's Cool Whip. Anyway, I think I have to try that one out because I remember that one. Here's animal crackers. Oh, look at this. Princess tort. So the princess cake, uh, this was like big on um, the Bake Off. So maybe she's got a simpler version of that. That would be good. Anyway, you can tell I really like this book. I like this book a lot. So um, I'm going to check out her website and I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy this one. 
So um, yeah, that's my that's my haul of um, the last couple of weeks. I will share that um, I've already returned the book because I um, I read the whole thing and I renewed it as many times as they would allow me and then it had to go back. And that book is called um, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. That book is great. I mean, great. That one I'm definitely going to buy. Um, I don't know how to say her name. I think it's Salmon Nasrat. I don't know. She's uh, Iranian, and I'm not sure I'm saying her name correctly. So my apologies, Salmon, if I'm not saying it right. Um, she also has a show on uh, Netflix based on the book, and that show is absolutely beautiful. You have to watch it and pay attention to it because she travels the world, and people speak in their native language on this uh, documentary t style of movie um, so you have to read the subtitles I do anyway I don't speak Italian or Japanese or Iranian where else did she go she went to a lot of places um, yeah so I had to read the subtitles but the show is it is gorgeous it is absolutely beautiful and I adored her. I thought she was amazing. She got her start working at Chez Panis, um, probably in the 90s, because she's about 15 years younger than I am. Um, but uh, she comes off as a really uh, incredible person and highly recommend the Netflix series, highly recommend the book. Uh, I didn't get to cook anything out of the book because um, it's not so much about recipes as it is about learning how to combine ingredients um, and the essentials of good cooking, which is not necessarily following recipes. She has some in the back, but um, I didn't get to make anything. I just enjoyed reading her book. So that's, I'll put that below, even though I don't have it here. And I can't think of what else I've, I've read since I started this. It's like, I don't know, I just decided at the first of the year that I wanted to read more books and get into the library, and I've been doing it. And also, uh, specifically going to the big library in Norfolk because it gets me out of the house. It gets me doing something new. It's like, uh, as you get older, you have this tendency to really, like, um, your your world shrinks as you get older and you tend not to go out and try new things uh, and, and venture beyond your little five mile bubble. And um, I'm totally guilty of it. I'm trying to work on not being quite so guilty <laughs> and getting myself out there more. So anyway, um, that's my video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know the background is not like you know, super fancy and exciting. I'm sorry. Um, it was just easy for me in terms of lighting and I wanted to get this in before I, I have to take off. And, uh, okay. That's, uh, that's gone on way longer than I expected. I didn't know I had so much to say about library books, but there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, that, that's what I have. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed and, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.